one second. Let me start the clock here. Stop watch. Hey, this is Stephen for Legit, Legit Tech Tutorials, and welcome back to my new season of my uh, tutorial, uh, my product development series. So, in this season, uh, we are going to uh, develop a CNC plasma cutter, a uh, four foot by eight foot bed CNC plasma. So uh, recently, uh, today is 11 17 2017. Uh, recently, as in 11 15 2017, Tech Shop uh, LLC filed for Chapter 7 bankruptcy. So the shop that I would go to to access heavy duty machinery, their plasma cutter, their water jet, their uh, CNC router, CNC mill, and uh, also where I had my office near all those machines has now become off limits because the company no longer exists. So uh, one of the products uh, that you guys have seen on my product uh, design series or one of the seasons or in the series uh, is the um, uh, shredder, pl uh, plastic shredder. And that uses, uh, usually I used to use the uh, Redwood City CNC Plasma and it had some uh, design problems uh, that I didn't like and also the cut quality was meh and um, you know and, and I couldn't change any of the any of the presets on the system to get it to do what I wanted it to do so but uh, the cuts were workable so that we could uh, work around the cuts so what I wanted to do is get a machine that uh, build a machine that I uh, would could use to get rid of all of those design flaws and then um, get rid of the design flaws, uh, know how it's built, and also use open source tools so I could get in and change the firmware and stuff. So uh, what I'm thinking of is uh, CNC, for the CNC controller is uh, Gerbil, which is a Arduino Uno with, a, um, with four stepper drivers on it and also access to power relay to turn the, um, to switch the plasma on and off. So you have... Um, you know, you either have two X's, a Y, and a, and a Z, and that's all your four um, four channels for the step motors, or you could do uh, some other combination. So that is completely open source, and you could also add a Raspberry Pi to do uh, web to do web based uh, um, web based cutting, and uh, so no wires needed. Um, Whole bunch of different, whole bunch of different ways of doing it. So you don't need a dedicated PC to actually run the software. You could actually push it to the art. Well, I guess you would, because the Raspberry Pi is technically a dedicated PC, but a cheap one at that. So maybe run something like that with a uh, gerbil, which uh, something that could be updated. I could make my own firmware. I could go in and edit the firmware. All open source. Everything is accessible. And also, of course, because it's my machine, I can modify it whenever I want. So I did like the plasma. Um, uh, Tech Shop also had the CNC water jet, which was uh, definitely very expensive to run. Uh, it was three dollars a minute to run, so you know, one hundred and eighty dollars an hour, and also it moved very slowly. Then you had the laser, which we didn't have any access to a laser that would be able to cut quarter inch steel. We had laser sixty watt lasers. Um, we had uh, Epilogue helixes and a one epilog fusion and one universal laser and uh, those were good for cutting acrylic quarter inch acrylic uh, some some thinner um, woods and then uh, the next best thing was uh, the CNC mill but the mill was incredibly slow had seven inch per minute movement speed and usually I would do three passes so one second <coughs> uh, I had to do three passes so um, each shredder was 888 travel inches, so that times 7, sorry, that times 3, 2,500 or whatever, and then divided by 7 was about 6.5 hours per shredder. So I did like the, um, the Tech Shop Plasma because um, it did 45-minute cut for an entire shredder on, on 40 amps and also uh, did 45-minute cut so for 45 minute cut on 40 amps and around 20 minute cut on uh, 60 amps but the 40 amp was definitely a better better cut than the 60 amp 
So I like that speed, and I wanted to be able to produce uh, parts at that type of uh, speed. So um, now that I do no, that I no longer have the location, and also because of that, we're going to have to design around the limitations that we have because I have very few metalworking machines anymore. I have access to um, a few manual mills and a lathe, uh, drill press, etc., um, welder, and obviously electronics, you know, soldering iron and stuff like that. So most of the stuff is probably going to have to be uh, be made on, you know, a manual mill to be laid out on a manual mill. Uh, we do have access to a CNC one, but I'm not exactly sure how to use that. It's a old Haas, and so I'm not exactly sure how to use that. I've I've only used um, Tech Shop's Tormach, which is very easy to use. So most of this is going to be designed around using um, just basic. Uh, basic tools like um, you know drill like a drill or a drill press um, maybe a manual mill to maybe lay that out more accurately but you probably do it with just a um, um, drill press um, yeah so uh, let's talk a little bit about um, let's open up the Trello let's open up Trello um, So I'm on my second screen right now. Let's put it on the. Let's put it on the other one. Let's put it on my my main account. Let's put it on this one. Or legit tutorials. Okay. So CNC plasma cutter. So basically what this guy is going to be doing for right now is uh, is mainly going to be situated back at my home university, San Jose State, which I would usually go to San Jose State and then after I'd go to Tech Shop. So this one will probably be housed in uh, my per my advisor. I run a club out of San Jose State called uh, Maker Club and uh, my advisor is the machine shop instructor. So he has access to that room and so we've talked multiple times about putting building and putting a plasma cutter in there. So because I no longer have a shop, I'm going to take them up on that offer. And then maybe there are some talks of rumors of uh, places that uh, people from the shop that want to get a commercial space and create a members-owned tech shop, which also is kind of interesting, but I'm already paying tuition for school. Might as well um, use school to make this stuff in. Um, Yeah, so I'm going to house that right there, and then I'll, most of my projects will I'll probably be operating out of there for a while. Uh, maybe for six months or so, and then uh, they're going to move, some of my buddies are going to move to a bigger location, and I'll probably join them there for my last year of school, maybe. So anyways, uh, four by eight foot, uh, definitely want to run that so we could put our plate of steel on there. Um, uh, yeah, so... Uh, I have the Trillo open, so let's go ahead and bring the Trillo. Uh, go ahead and uh, bring this back over here, so I can look up stuff in this other this other page and bring it over. Okay, so um, number one is I'm going to talk about some of the downsides that the first uh, the the Tech Shop uh, plasma cutter had. The number one is a uh, backlash. Issues a uh, backlash. So that machine had a rack and pinion gear. So basically, it had a long gear. Let me see if I can show you. Um, let me see if I can show you. Yeah. Oops. That that one didn't work. Du, 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 du. Yeah. So yeah, this one like this. So, this one had a rack and pinion, right? You see here a gear up against teeth. And what the problem was is, you know, the, this kind of system it had backlash where you could grab the gantry and you could move it because the gears, when they wear, they don't mesh perfectly. So, I'm kind of doing it with my fingers right now, but... Um, you have like uh, the slot that you have that's supposed to be filled up with the gear the gear is now smaller than the slot or the slots bigger than the gear however you want to say it and then so you can push on the um, 
you push on the machine and that teeth wa the tooth will actually move and then that will allow for some backlash so this especially happens when you're changing directions very radically um, so very dramatically or radically yeah so when you're going straight and you stop and go the opposite direction you might run into the other way a little bit more you're, you're, you're so when you're doing like a circle you might have um, you, your, your, your circle might not perfectly be to spec or if you're drawing a square if you're cutting a square and you go to the end of one of the squares and you change direction it might that corner might be longer than your actual square you wanted it to be so how you could do how you could check this is you could turn all the motors on and have the mo stepper motors lock and then you could grab the main gantry and you can move it slightly maybe maybe uh, half a millimeter or so obviously this probably is not just from the rack and pinion system it's probably be because it's worn because it was an old hand-me-down system to tech shop it, that could be also the possibility that it was just worn and um, that need to be replaced but uh, that definitely don't want to uh, um, have that problem on mine. Another problem is that you could get debris inside the uh, inside the rack and pinion, and as the as the gear comes back here, it's going to get stuck. So I mean, other than that, it's it's a pretty stable system. So I mean, it's it's good. It's going to be expensive because you need a gear here that's perfectly machined, and then you need this long. Uh, uh, you know, rack. So the general is pinion is a rack. So you need a very long rack, and also after the pinion wires, you have to replace the pinion. Uh, and also, if the rack is worn and you don't like compensate that by making the pinion have bigger teeth on it or whatever, then you have to repl you have to cut this thing off and replace the whole thing. So uh, my idea was to use um, was to use belts. Just like a standard 3D printer. So what did I do with it? There it is. So to use belts instead of a rack and pinion. So uh, the other problem with belts is they stretch. So the idea is to use as short of a belt as possible so that the total stretch isn't very isn't very much. And also, usually on these uh, movements, so the belt is going to maintain accuracy very well. Also, it does not have nearly the backlash problems as uh, as the um, the pinion does because it generally doesn't wear very much, right? Unless something's really wrong. Generally, they last for a very long time. It takes a lot longer to wear because it's not steel on steel rubbing. So it's not necessarily it's not really high friction. Um, very very accessible easy to buy very cheap very easy to buy very long lengths and a lot of different things that we that you could do with them right and then so that would be all the gantries except for the z z will probably be lead screw uh this other one used i think it, it used lead screw yeah it used lead screw um and then that one we'll probably have to figure out a system that we're going to use to find the top of the plate Maybe some sort of uh, switch or in stop or something that finds a plate and then sets that as the uh, the height. Um, yeah, so uh, tooth belt. So see here features. You have belt um, GT2 belt. And so this obviously very very accessible with 3D printers nowadays, as most 3D printers use belts. And also that this isn't necessarily a CNC mill, so there's very little uh, forces required that the belt is going to have to counter, right? Because it's it's just moving, it's just moving above the the material. So you don't really need that much force to uh, to to keep that keep that going. So belt should be fine, especially if you keep it short. It, it should stay relatively strong, um, especially if it's a reinforced belt. And also, it's going to be a little bit, a uh, little bit less, a uh, little bit fewer things to uh, machine. Another thing for the um, for the movement. So usually we have some different ways of movement, um, 
here are a few. This one's using this one's using a rail with carriages. This one's using rollers, V wheels. This one's using rails. Okay, so let me go ahead and, and pull this over here. So we have a few different ways of movement. So here, this one is rail. It's a rail and carriage. Very expensive for that rail. And you have a pickup for the in stop. And this is a rack and pinion gear. Then you have um, another rack and pinion setup. I believe this is uh, RC RC router parts. Yeah, I've seen some videos on these guys, where they they ha they make some pretty good rack and pinion sets. Um, rack and pinion. Basically, it's because I searched rack and pinion. So here's another interesting way to get rid of it. You get rid of any of the problems, but mainly. Um, So you have a few different ways. So here's a carriage. This is uh, wheels on bear bearings on a machine surface. So so this is this is the one at a tech shop used. It is this this style, which is good because you can also put stuff on here. But the problem is sometimes you forget that you put stuff on here, and uh, it gets caught. Right, it gets caught underneath. And it uses uh, aluminum extrusion. So that's another thing. Is that what are we going to use for? Uh, for you know for the, for for this kind of stuff so another one that we could use is a four-way box tubing it's kind of how this has it so you have a a v uh, a v bearing that goes on top goes on top and goes on bottom goes on bottom right and it attaches around here or another one is angle iron where you create a triangle out of the angle iron so let me see if i could find something like that Basically, you create a diamond shape, and then you have two V bearings, one on top, one below. That's also a pretty. That's not what that's using. So this one's rack and pinion, and then this is using uh, side bearings. Your side bearing. This is a carriage. Rack and pinion. I don't know what that one's using. Trying to find one, I think. Yeah. So that one's maybe using chrome rod, but usually they they have they're either using carriages. Uh, Here's with chrome rod, but I don't think that's definitely don't want to do that. That's unsupported chrome rod. Oh, but it's on it's on a carriage, so carried with chrome rod. Chrome rod, chrome rod's probably to keep it from racking. That's the main. That's the main problem that you're worried about is this thing racking back and forth. You want to keep this. Uh, you want to keep the the torch nice and parallel. There's another big carriage, a big uh, linear rail with carriages. Uh, I don't know what that is. There's a CNC router parts. Looks like a bearing, supported bearing. Here's a box tubing. So this is where you would use the square. Uh, box tubing is probably going to be the easiest to build as we just uh, buy a big piece of box tubing and have some uh, V uh, some V rails that uh, attach on there and uh, run back and forth. This is, and then the next one's probably just a flat bar on top and then bolt it down. So those are those are a few that I'm looking at. Uh, probably not going to do, a, this is a supported linear rod. So probably not going to do, there you go. So yeah, this is another one, but you have to worry about how precise this piece is on the way down. Right? That's, that's another problem. Chrome rod. It's definitely going to be different, but chrome rods very expensive in places where we could spend it elsewhere. I mean, we don't need like really, really, really high. Here's another one. This is a go torch. I've seen this one quite a bit. They want quite a bit of money for that one, though. Um, yeah. So here's a, another square tubing. So you see here, they just have ones run on top, ones run on bottom, and then you know you square it up. So maybe maybe you could buy you know ground uh, ground tube or whatever. 
or we could you know grind it ourselves we do have a surface grinder at school but we don't really use uh, it's not really up and running operation so yeah so tubing tubing is pretty popular another one would be a uh, V rail V rail I think um, or angle writing on the top of angle would probably be a very good deal as well as uh, I do have a pretty good connection on uh, steel scrap A36 steel so I think that we're either going to run with uh, um, flat bar this is for um, uh, this is for axes so I would like to run extrusion but it's going to be very expensive uh, for that and the main reason why I would want to go with extrusion is so I could reuse it elsewhere after I'm done with it but um, because extrusion you can use pretty much anywhere but it's definitely going to be um, more expensive while like using two inch flat bar is not nearly going to be as expensive right flat bar and usually flat bar is pretty well machined correctly and then maybe um, run over the top of that guy you know just to smooth it up so it's nice and low friction uh, maybe with like a polishing wheel I mean even if you lose a little bit a few thousands so you know I'm not gonna cry not gonna cry over a few thousands because that all could be I mean if it's varying as it goes down then that can't be calibrated out but most of the time that could be calibrated out so axis flat bar um, or uh, angle angle iron so angle iron again welded together to where it forms like a diamond and then you have a um, you could run four you could run uh, four bearings one on the right one on the left one on the top and one on the bottom but for the most part it'd be one on the top one on the bottom and then that will prevent any sort of rocking um, that's another way of doing it and then the other one is square two. Then uh, what are we going to use for where to go? Then what are we going to use for the table itself? So we have a few different options. We have um, we have um, you have either normally two different options. You have either uh, what was I you have either a water table such as this water table right or you have a regular dry table such as this where uh, the pieces fall onto the ground and then this is this is flat bar it looks like it's running on yes yeah, you flat bar um, and also the the previous the previous uh, plasma like I said that uh, we were using a tech shop it was using flat bar the flat bar on top and it runs. Here's extrusion running on extrusion. And then the same thing, you probably I'd probably run the exact same thing at the top, have flat bar kind of like this. This is basically using flat bar. Flat bar, but it's using extrusion across. This is using uh, uh, rails. And then again for this, this would be bearings, bearing, uh, sorry, uh, belt, belt, belt. This is using a lead screw. Okay. So yeah, and then uh, construction for the legs, uh, probably steel tube or aluminum extrusion. Probably going to go with steel tube. Reason being uh, is I want to be able to hold um, a four by eight sheet of quarter inch, which is three hundred and about three hundred and sixty pounds. So I want to be able to hold at least that. Well, at least 360 pounds worth of steel on top of that bit. So definitely I'm going to want to probably go with uh, some uh, steel bar, some steel tube like so. So probably just buy a whole bunch of steel tube and then we have, you know, the drag chain or whatever. If I, if I want to use that. The one that Tech Shop used a drag chain as well. And then use a uh, so for the for the plasma cutter itself, it's probably going to be a cut 50, um, you know, Chinese, uh, Chinese CNC, uh, not CNC, Chinese um, um, plasma cutter that uh, 
can also be used for CNC, which, you know, that that's fine with me starting out. And then maybe I could get a pencil. It's called like a like a pencil or a vertical um, um, a vertical attachment. I would like to get two attachments so I could so I could use a torch, have a torch dedicated on the machine, and then another torch that I could pull off and use on handheld uh, parts for let's say that I get a bigger sheet of steel and um, you know I want to cut it or whatever, and I and I want to cut it off of the machine. Here's like a marker. Put the marker on. So yeah. Um. Also, word. Then um, this is gonna have gerbil. Open source control. Then maybe um, Raspberry Pi control as well for uh, wireless or computerless control with like maybe a small touch screen be able to mess with the touch screen. Dribble store open source control. Cut the eye wires. Okay, so GT2 belts with pulleys for uh, for drive. Uh, obviously, like I said, lead screw for Z. Um, dribble open source for uh, for general control. Raspberry Pi for wireless uh, control. Then let's see what else we got. Oh, here's a here's a good picture of. Uh, Here's a good picture. Is it this one? There's another one. Oh, there it is. Here's a good picture of using um, using two. Obviously, it probably won't be as elegant as this because you know this is easier to plasma cut than it is as you see here. So probably just a square piece of plate with these holes drilled in, pretty much, or a piece of aluminum with these holes drilled in, and then it bolts onto another piece with these holes drilled onto it. And then this piece is like welded with, you know, those pieces drilled onto it. Here's another one. This one's writing, got one writing on the edge. Another one writing on the edge right here, I think. And then a few writing on the side. So, yeah, multiple ways, multiple ways of doing it. So, um, parts list. Maybe a little bit of a parts list. So durable, and then also prices because obviously I'm I'm okay listing prices because this is not a product of mine. It's just a machine that I'm going to use to build stuff. Okay, durable with uh, NEMA 17s um, for DVR 800s or wherever they are. Drivers, stepper drivers, two two and a half amp stepper drivers, which go on the gerbil controller. Um, then this is a Arduino Uno. Then um, uh, four end stops. That's about fifty dollars. Then you have the cut, cut 50 plasma cutter, and that is about $200. 150 to 200, 150 to 200. Also, we're going to need a, um, a, what's it called? A compressor, but uh, the, the shop that I have is compressor, so compressor already have. Because it uses air, uh, air as the uh, uh, support support gas. Um, then we would need to design it in fusion to come up with uh, the steel required, um, and also for the ribs and whatnot. And then whether it's going to use the water table or not, which probably it won't. 
because another thing is uh, it's going to be in an enclosed space, so I definitely want to uh, uh, capture the gas and filter it through a HEPA filter before I deposit it towards the ceiling. You know, away from anybody that's breathing it and have it, have it get caught in the ceiling. So, um, definitely want to have a big section chamber in the bottom where, uh, you know, the, the gases will get sucked through. And then uh, it would be nice to have some sort of um, conveyor belt on the bottom or something. So maybe uh, after the cut, I just like turn something. Um, it's like turn something, and then it like files these parts into like a into like a drum at the end, so I don't have to go underneath it to get it. Cause that's super annoying, sticking a magnet down there and trying to get it, trying to get it out. So maybe a conveyor belt for retrieval, hand crank or. Maybe an electric, that's not really a big of a deal. And then it dumps it into a bucket or whatever. So, compressor, and then we have steel. Which I don't know price. Etc. So, issues, backlash, belts, um... The other part uh, is so not open so software. So we use our own uh, our own G code generator and also our own um, things to stream the G code to the machine. It's so not open software. Also consumables. wearing out quickly because the other the other one uh, had consumables wear out er about every four hours but every four hours of cutting you would have to replace consumables and consumables were running about sixty two dollars per set then this one is uh, consumables wearing out quickly next one Um, height control, which uh, as of right now, I don't know how I'm going to uh, uh, figure that one out, um, get that to work with gerbil, so that will be also another one that I have to figure out. So that is uh, basically just some of the things that i um, looking at here on uh, the different things that we need so again when we design when we start to design this after I think about it may, uh, maybe later today I'll, I'll have the first video of designing it after I figure out how uh, which way the gantry is going to work and also design the legs and whether I'm going to use an air box which I probably will just to uh, keep the the gases uh, to, to clean the gases out so filter it out because we have a small space and whether or not I will be able to get those gases out of the out of the building is uh, is questionable maybe I would have to run the hose to the grade level door so uh, run it out the grade level door while I'm cutting so a uh, vacuum box definitely so uh, prevent anybody from from uh, you know in inhaling gases and then maybe even uh, with that maybe even fully enclosed up up and around so that um, you basically suck all the gases out and uh, yeah maybe even like try to pull a vacuum on it would be pretty interesting I've never seen plasma cutter work in a vacuum um yeah so that's pretty much all I'm going to talk about in this video just just some different uh, kinematics of how it's set up. One of the kinematics I was thinking about running was maybe um, something like a uh, Core XY or something for high speeds, uh, low backlash, um, but with 50 amps, it's not going to be that fast, anyways. 
especially through quarter inch, but through the small sheet, it's definitely it could definitely make use of the core XY while keeping its accuracy very high. So um, that's pretty much it for this video. I'm gonna think about some some things that I definitely want it to have, and then uh, we'll we'll make use of uh, that and try to get get started on designing on designing the machine here and hopefully next video maybe the video after that all right so this has been steven from legit tech tutorials like thank you guys for watching if you like this video please subscribe for more videos like it in this series and our series as well I'll see you guys in the next video thanks for watching take it easy peace